Hey, welcome back to another video. For those of you who don't know me, my name is, uh, what's my name? I'm just a dude who programs a video game and I've been doing it for a while now. I'm chipping away at it slowly but surely. Every single day, we're solving problems. We're getting things done. The problem of the day, uh, I can't remember what it was, but it was a doozy. It was a goddamn doozy. Oh yeah, matrix math. So this is the problem of the day. I know, I know. It might look a little intimidating, but that's because of this. <laughs> ah! I'm sure we'll make some amount of progress on it today. So uh, yeah, get cozy, grab your nice beverage, of choice i'm drinking a nice hot milo let's get some work done all right i've kind of figured out a way to do this conceptually basically what i'm trying to do is move this joint here to be halfway between its original position and the mouse position it's kind of arbitrary but i'm just doing that for test purposes to show that i know how matrix math works and how to kind of manipulate all the bones properly currently i do not whatsoever so that's great beginning a programming session is probably the most difficult part because it's like how do i insert myself back into this problem and begin solving something it's also kind of good because it's a moment where you're most detached from the problem. You can kind of take a step back and look at the whole thing. You're not right in the weeds of it. So let's do just that. Let's take a step back and let's do a little bit of thinking. 20 minutes later. You see, at this point, I'm just stabbing wildly in the dark and that's not really a good place to be. So let's establish some kind of understanding, some kind of order from this. I'm so incredibly lost. So I'm doing something wrong here, fundamentally, that I need to fix first. Let's just completely scrap the mass position for one, because it turns out it's entirely fucked and I don't know what I'm doing. And let's just make sure that I've got things right. All right, I'm curious what's in this joint matrix. That's definitely the translation. And then the rotational component. Well, that looks right to me, just that alone. What I would like to do is, first of all, disable the debug skeleton. And I'm basically gonna try and draw the rotational component of it as well. I'm only debugging the position right now. So what I'm going to try and do is get the rotation in as well. Just so we can see what's actually going on. So that gives us the position. Um, I'm going to push a line. And that works right out of the gate. Okay, cool. So I've just figured out how to actually properly draw matrices. I was basically doing it in the skeleton anyway. But that should give me the ability to debug draw just about any matrix. So that's cool. So I've just basically stripped away absolutely everything. And this is literally just my entire code. I'm gonna keep it simple. We're gonna try and test it properly and not have a breakdown of understanding at any step. Because as soon as you stop understanding things and you kind of just poke in the dark randomly doing things, and well, that's exactly what you're doing. You're just taking wild stabs at the dark and it's you're not really gonna get anywhere all right finally making some goddamn progress so i've just figured out how to do something ages ago that i was really struggling with and that's debug the mouse position without doing any kind of weird fuckery right i'm literally just inversing the projection and the view as well this time and returning the whole vector and then i'm just translating that position in this matrix and then you know just doing the exact reverse and just drawing a debug with this matrix and that's spot on that's working really well i'm just gonna push this up because this is kind of like a clean slate right here uh, my me just committing code that i have completely massacred but that's okay because this right here is absolute it's simple it works order has been established okay i'm not flailing around hopelessly in chaos which is you know always excellent good epic the next step is to set a joint to the mouse position properly the key word here being properly and not via fluke which is what happened last time and then I realized, oh, hang on, this isn't actually working. This is kind of just very flukish. So yeah, but now that I've got this, I feel like it's a good jumping off point, you know? All right, I'm gonna come back this afternoon and I'm gonna tackle this to do and hopefully make a bit more progress. We'll see how we go. All right, see you in a GIF. Boys, we don't have much time. I'm stuck inside a video saying the same thing over and over again. Hi, my name's Thomas Randall and I'm here to tell you about the benefits of becoming a member on my website. Aside from supporting yours truly and helping to hire new team members to pump out the game more quicker and effectively, you'll also get access to all the source code for my game. Don't go stealing it now. I mean, what are you gonna do? Make it for me? You'll also get access to Rando's Digital Garden, which is a second brain run in obsidian.md. It's a long story, just pause the video if you wanna learn more. You'll also get access to the Crack Den, which is our lovely little Discord community. There's a bunch of cool stuff in there. Nice. 
And last but not least, for the time being anyway, you'll get the Randy.gg monospace font to use in your code editors. Or just wherever else you want to use it, I guess. If any of that tickles your pickle, you can actually get a free membership if you have an Amazon Prime account. Just follow the directions over at randy.gg slash prime, link in the description. That'll give me a free $2.50 US per month if you keep on renewing it, all thanks to Daddy Jeff. If you don't have a Prime account though, but would still like to support me, it's four US dollars per month to join up. And I'm trying to make it as worthwhile as possible every single day by growing this little community of ours and adding new stuff to it. Just type randy.gg into your browser of choice or follow the link down in the description. Boys, we don't have much time. I'm stuck inside a video saying the same thing over and over again. Oh, fuck. Welcome back to the chill late night vibes. We got a candle lit and it's goddamn cozy in here. All right, so what did we leave off with? Uh, set a joint to the mass position properly in all caps. It must be done properly. What constitutes proper? How does one do it? Play some extreme thrash metal. That sounds like a good idea. Can't be done. Simply can't be done. All right, so you gotta set the mass position to the start joint, right? But the catch is the start joint is in local space. So how do I get it into the anti-local space? Because the mass position is in the model space. So I need to like get the mass position into the local space or something like that. It's really tricky trying to reconcile these two spaces of the local transform space, how it's translation and rotation, and the space of the model space matrices. It's hard to join those two together. I just don't know how to do it. The only reason I've got it in local space is because of quaternion interpolation and all that stuff with animations. I could just have it at a different step, right? This could just be further down the line. Well, but then it's gonna be tricky to reconcile animations with IK because we've got that massive gap there. I'm thinking too far ahead there. <sighs> This is a big fucking problem. God damn. So the only solution to this problem is me sitting here and fucking solving it. I'm just gonna like pace around until I come up with some kind of idea and I'll let you know how I go. All right, got a lead. Figure out how to reverse the joint mat back to zero. That's what I'm gonna try to do. If I can reverse the joint mat back to zero by doing the entire thing in reverse, then I can also apply the exact same set of transformations to this guy, and that will put it into local space and give it the offset that we need. That's the little thought experiment. My next issue is actually figuring out how to reverse an operation like this. Because uh, what's happening is this get m4 from transform is essentially just going translation times rotation. We can start simple by putting it at the root instead of the leg. That seems like a bitch move though. I ain't copping out. What I need to do, I've just figured out, is uh, we've got a bunch of rotations happening for each joint, right? This rotates out that way, and then this rotates down the other way to get all the way down to here. In order to neutralize this, what I need to do is just flip these rotations around. So I need to reverse this rotation to bring it back into this space, and then use this rotation to reverse this one to bring it back directly. Up. How do I do that? Now to reverse a quaternion. Use a quaternion.inverse function. Ah, yes. Let me just use a quaternion.inverse function real quick. What is the math behind this? Mm. How to calculate inverse of quaternion. And then how would I apply those two together? If I wanted to reverse a quaternion, I could just set it back to its normal values, right? I could just set it back to a unit quaternion. Like I could do this, right? And I think that'll just... Yeah, perfect. Yeah, so that's just literally canceled out the rotation. And now from there, uh, let me just actually put this guy back on so he's not moving. That should basically be one to one. So this movement right here, although it is offset quite a bit because of reasons, that should be one to one now. That should be following the mouse goes exactly. So no matter how far out we go, there's no kind of weird skewing happening because the rotation is completely flat. So I would imagine that that's solved our problem. I'm slowly but surely understanding Understanding all of this. All right, so what I need to do now in order to make this not look scuffed is, well, you know, obviously get rid of me resetting the rotations, but I essentially have to reset the rotations in the matrix beforehand so that it's in the position, not the actual entire you know, rotation, apparent rotation, all that kind of stuff. The two rotations that I want to reverse are this guy right here. So we'll call this R2 and then this guy right here, R1, which is the start joint. These are our two quaternions that we 
want to reverse, right? So we're trying to apply these reverse translations to this guy right here, this test matrix. How do I do that? Yay, a nice video. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's exactly what I want. And up here, I'm now down here. Everything turns negative. So it's the same thing as saying over negative. two and hat. I do not understand. Simple we're literally just flipping power. XYZ. Is that legit? I just flipped the fucking XYZ. All right, quick little update. I've successfully reversed the rotation of this joint map over here. That's the joint matrix. And I really just flipped these guys around and rotated it back. And when I multiply those two together, I get this matrix, which has absolutely no rotational component whatsoever. So that's good. I'm literally just rotating R1, which R1 is, you know, the inverse of the parent. And then I'm translating just one along the X, which, you know, should slide it back, which, you know, that's exactly what it does. So that's good, I believe. All right, it's kind of odd to me that having both rotations together do that, whereas just having one rotation like that actually normalizes it and puts it back to that. So what I'm doing here, right, I'm flipping this one back to this line here. So then it's pointing like that. You know, I would think that that's done. But then apparently there's another one. Actually, maybe I check VS code. Damn, it's raining. Ooh, it's thundering outside, baby. Oh, don't you just love that feeling? We're just inside, tapping away on the keyboard, solving some problems, getting shit done. Uh, I think it might have something to do with quaternions and the fact that, no, I honestly have no clue. I'm kind of just stabbing in the dark. So I'm thinking we just pull a cheeky little, it works. So let's not dive too much deeper into that. By the magical graces of the programming gods, uh, we're just gonna chuck a little note here saying, just applying the inverse rotation of the current joints. Not sure how good this is. Thought we'd need to go all the way up the chain, but I don't know. If it still ain't working in the future, I can just look at that node and be like, bam, maybe we should try that. Jesus fucking Christ. It is so violent outside. We really do be smack bang in the middle of a thunderstorm. With the rain in the background, nice little candle. It's so violent. All right, so I've literally just left in the second rotation, which is the parent, right? And that seems to have done something. What if I get rid of this? Is that still going to be good? Yeah, okay. I don't want to get my hopes up too much, but I think I might have just fixed that. So apparently we just apply the parent rotation. So now my next little thing that I want to do is get the mass position actually snapped to the bone thing. So right now it's way offset. I could maybe try doing what I was doing before, multiplying by the inverse bind matrix to level it out. Look at that. Right on the money. Directly on the joint. Anywhere on the screen. Absolutely no drifting whatsoever. God damn. That is amazing. Without touching anything else, is that going to then put me down to the third leg bone? Um, kind of. I'm certainly right there, but now it's just inversed. It's the other way around. God Damn it. So that does look like it's drifting. Neither does leg. And the two things that these guys have in common is they are the exact same number of joints away from the root. It might have something to do with the parents. So if I multiply out all the parents, then maybe we should be good. All right, well, I guess that's the next step is to just loop through all the parents and see if that works, but I'm kind of burnt. So I'm just gonna call it there. Uh, I've definitely made quite a bit of progress in understanding matrices very, very slowly, but. Hey, what can you do? Thanks for tuning in. See you in the next one, I guess. Bye-bye now. Adios, amigos.